Okay, welcome to uh, this revision video for AQA Science Chemistry Unit 1.1 Fundamental Ideas. Okay, the first thing you need to know about is the structure of an atom. There are three particles that make up an atom, the proton, the neutron and the electron. The proton and neutron are found in the nucleus of the atom and both have a heavy mass, a relative mass of one. They weigh the same as each other uh, and they have a charge, a proton plus one if you're pro, you're positive, so protons are positively charged. Neutrons are neutral, they've got no charge. Third particle is the electron. The electron is a tiny particle with a mass of almost zero. It's about one two thousandth of the mass of one neutron or one proton. And it orbits around the outside of the atom in orbitals and has the opposite charge to a proton. It's got a charge of minus one. Now then, in an atom, the atom overall is neutral because the number of positive protons in the nucleus is balanced by the number of negative electrons in the orbitals. So the diagram here shows a fluorine atom in its nucleus. It's got nine protons and also ten neutrons. And then orbiting around the outside, it's got nine electrons. So nine positive protons, nine negative electrons. Overall, it's neutral. Electrons orbit in shells. Uh, remember, 288. Uh, that is, uh, 2 is the maximum number of electrons in the first shell, 8 is the maximum in the second shell, and 8 in the third shell. So fluorine, having 9 electrons, has 2 in the first shell, that's now full, so then you start filling up the second shell. Uh, there's only 7 more electrons, so they all go into the uh, second shell. And that's called the electron configuration. We can also represent it in numbers to save drawing all those circles. 2.7, 2 in the first shell, 7 in the second shell. Okay, so uh, here's a potassium atom. Potassium is atomic number 19, which means it's got 19 protons in the nucleus and also 19 electrons in its shells. Um, it's also got 20 neutrons inside the, the nucleus, so 2 in the first shell. 8 in the second shell, that's a total of 10. 8 more in the third shell, so that's 18. So the 19th electron is all on its own in the fourth shell. That's the high, almost the highest atomic number that you'll be asked in the exam. You may be asked about calcium, which has got 20 electrons and 20 protons, so there'll be 2 in the fourth shell. Uh, after that, it starts to get a bit more complicated, and uh, that's not part of the GCSE syllabus. So uh, we've got our nucleus with the protons and neutrons. That's all the mass of the atom, pretty much. Um, and two important key terms, the atomic number. That's the number of protons in the nucleus. Having 19 protons is what makes potassium potassium. The other number shown there is called the mass number, or the relative atomic mass. And that's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So because potassium has got 19 protons and 20 neutrons, 19 plus 20, that's 39, a mass number of 39. So from the symbol for potassium there, if I know that it's atomic number 19 and mass number 39, 39 take away 19, that tells me it's got 20 neutrons. Right then, so the periodic table. Uh, the periodic table was uh, invented by a chap by the name of Dmitry Mendeleev, and his important realization was that the elements must be put in order of atomic number, and he put families of elements together, that is, elements with similar properties into groups or vertical columns on the periodic table. So if I show you a periodic table, here is one and uh, you can see they're color coded to show the various regions of the periodic table. Uh, a number of important groups you need to know about. Group 1 down here, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, that's an important group. That's called the alkali metals and they've all got one electron in their outer shell. So they have similar patterns of reactivity uh, because they've got one electron in their outer shell. Uh, over on the far side we've got group 0 helium, neon, 
argon, krypton, xenon and radon, they all have completely full electron shells. So they're often called group zero because they don't really do any chemical reactions. Coming in from the right we've got group seven, that's the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and astatine. This group, group seven, they all have one gap in their outer shell. They're all looking for one electron to fill up that, out, that outer shell. So group zero, group seven, the next one in from the right is group six. The two most important ones to know about in group six are oxygen and sulfur and both of those two atoms uh, have two spaces in their outermost electron shell and so want to gain two electrons.